Hi there, Tony Thorson here, Chief Masher Upper at Dev Mashup, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get up and running with a code generation tool called Yeoman. Let's dive in. All right, to start off, let's take a look at what Yeoman actually is. So if you pull open a web browser, drag one over here, and go to yeoman.io, it's the web address for the project. You'll see this rather fun little fellow with a killer stash, sometimes with a wrench in his hand and a you know, nice little toolbox next to him. This is Yeoman, or at least the logo slash mascot for the project. Now feel free to sift through the site, but in short, Yeoman is a code generation tool chock full of generator plugins that you can install for many different project types. Now the homepage touts that it's a scaffolding tool for modern web apps, as you can see right here. But as we'll see shortly, it's really so much more than that because you can use Yeoman to generate code for any language or project type. I mean, hell, you can even use Yeoman to generate config files or documents if you really wanted. It's very, very versatile and we'll dig deeper into its versatility as we go. Now, web apps certainly are a popular choice when utilizing Yeoman. And if you click on the Discovering Generators menu here at the top of the site, you can scroll through this list that it brings up and see that there are a number of generator plugins for creating web applications. So you have jhipster here for creating Spring Boot plus uh, Angular or React applications. You have one for Feathers.js. Um, let's see what else we have down here. Now, a lot of this stuff is front end based, but not necessarily for full web apps. So there are some for creating full web applications as we saw with jhipster. But um, anyway, if you look at, there it is. If you look at this number here, you can see that there are about 8,500 different generators available on the web. So there's a lot to choose from and certainly a lot you can do with Yeoman itself. Now, typically Yeoman is used for scaffolding purposes, just like the homepage mentioned right here. Now, when I think of scaffolding, I think of a bare bones application wired up with default dependencies ready to be filled in with views or business logic. It's really the underlying structure and plumbing of a project or application. Now using Yeoman generators to create this for you is a good way to get your project created quickly while minimizing the tedious yet necessary work of creating the stubbed out projects and folder structures in addition to wiring everything up, setting up any necessary configurations, and so on to get your application built and running quickly. Now one of the things I use Yeoman for is creating microservices in .NET Core. My projects typically follow a similar pattern or architecture so I have a series of custom Yeoman generators I have built over the years for creating new .NET solutions and projects, repository and controller classes for basic CRUD operations, HTTP adapters, resource classes, and so on. Now, if you find that you're writing some of the same code every time you start a new project, you may look to see if there's a generator already created that fits your needs, which you can do using the search box on the discovery page we looked at just a second ago. Or if you're so inclined to do so, you can create a series of your own generators to suit your needs, which is outside the scope of this tutorial, but is a possibility nonetheless. And there is actually a creating a generator guide right here on the Yeoman website. All right, to get started, let's go ahead and install Yeoman using the command listed on the homepage here. And of course, being an NPM install command, you'll need to make sure that you have Node.js set up on your machine before you run this. Once you've completed that install, go ahead and install Yeoman using the npm install command and the dash g flag to install it as a global package. So I'll switch over to PowerShell, maybe. Okay. All right, so we'll run npm install dash g, yo. All right, now once that finishes, you should be able to launch Yeoman by simply running the command yo. All right, and without specifying any arguments to the yo command, you should see a text menu listing any generators you have installed on your system, which will probably be zero at this point, as well as some other options to update generators, install a new generator, get some help, and peace out. You can specify some command line arguments to the yo command to launch a specific code generator, which will bypass the default yeoman menu that you see here, but I'll get more into that later. 
Now installing a generator from the CLI here is a handy way to pull down generators from the web, but if you're new to Yeoman, I would actually recommend going back to the Yeoman website and hitting up the discovery page so that you can get a better idea as to what the different generators do. Now for example, if I click on the J Hipster listing, which has actually been the number one listing for as long as I can remember, I'm taken to the project's website so that I can get a better idea as to what it does before installing it. Now the website also has install instructions somewhere down here at the bottom if you decide to actually roll with it. But again, you can also install it from the Yeoman CLI if you decide to do that once you kind of get comfortable with what everything is doing. You'll notice here in the jhipster quick start section that the jhipster generator is actually just another npm package prefixed with generator hyphen. All Yeoman generators must include generator hyphen as a prefix in their name, in addition to including certain details in the package.json file, which is how Yeoman identifies these types of npm packages as generator plugins. And just to clarify, since I've been tossing around the term like it's going out of style here, a generator is just a package of templates and JavaScript files that perform the code generation for you. There's also the concept of subgenerators, but we'll get into that more in just a little bit. All right, to see a generator in action, let's go ahead and install this popular jhipster generator using npm, which we'll do by running the following command in a command prompt of your choice. Let me get back over here, let me clear this out. All right, so the install command, just like the website showed, is npm install dash g. Again, we're going to install this as a global package. Generator, not generator, generator, there we go, g hipster. All right, now once that finishes, go ahead and run the yo command again. Yo, come on. All right, and this time you should see this jhipster listing right here in your menu. Now, of course, I have other generators installed, a couple of which are local, but at a minimum, you should see jhipster listed there. Now, if you don't, then something probably went wrong. So you may sift through the install output there and see if you find any errors, address them as needed, and try again. Go ahead and select the jhipster generator. You can scroll up and down using the arrow keys and then just press enter on the jhipster listing. All right, there we go. Now, if you didn't catch it on the jhipster website, it is actually a series of generators for creating Java web apps using Spring Boot, and then either Angular or React for the front end. That being said, if you don't have Java installed, which clearly I don't, then you won't be able to do much with the output. Now for me, I'm not gonna take the time to actually set up Java at this point, especially since I think it really is on my machine, but I'm merely just running this as a demo to show you how to use Yeoman, and I really don't care much about the output itself. I really just wanted to point out that in case you're interested in actually using the generator for your projects, you may want to keep an eye out for these warnings and address any issues before running the generator. Now before generating any code, I do wanna address a few other things as well. I know, I know, the coder side view is like, come the fuck on, man. I really just want to see some code. Calm down, we'll get there, just to type. All right, you can see here that I'm running version 6.4.1. So depending on the version of the generator you've installed, you may or may not see the same output. Now secondly, there's a big warning at the top saying that running jhipster through Yeoman is actually deprecated. As you can see, jhipster actually has its own CLI that can be invoked directly so for this particular generator, you don't actually need to run it through Yeoman. My guess is that this started out as a Yeoman generator, and then as it got more and more popular, the development team decided, hey, why don't we just spin off our own version and bypass this whole Yeoman ecosystem directly by providing our own CLI. Now you'll find that not all generators have their own CLIs, and I would imagine that those who do will at least inform you in some sort of console output like jhipster did here. As far as I can tell, the functionality is the exact same, so whether you run it through Yeoman or the CLI directly is up to you. The next thing I want to point out is the output path. You can see here that all of the generated output will be dropped in my D repos directory. And there's a statement at the very top of the output here stating that you should make sure you are in the directory you want to scaffold into. Some generators give you the option to change the output path in a prompt of some sort, while others, such as this one, just use your current working directory. 
So before I go any further, I'm actually going to kill this using control C. Okay, and we'll clear this out. Uh, or clear, there we go. And make a new directory called jhipster in D demos. Okay, now I'll cd into that. There we go. And from here, I'll run jhipster again. This time though, rather than just typing yo and accessing the jhipster generator from the yeoman menu, I'm going to supply the name of the generator to the yo command, which will run the generator directly. If you're curious as to what the generator name is to supply to the yo command, just look at the name of the npm package. As I stated before, all yeoman generators are prefixed with generator hyphen, so you can either give the yo command the whole package name, we'll kill this, such as yo generator generator jhipster, in which case yeoman tells you that you don't need the generator hyphen prefix, or you can drop the generator hyphen portion and just supply the remaining portion of the package name to yeoman, which in this case is just jhipster. And the last thing I want to point out is that jhipster does a check on your system to ensure minimum requirements are met in order to be able to fully utilize the generator in its output. Being that it spits out a Java application, it does check to ensure that Java is installed on your machine in addition to a number of other tools and frameworks and will let you know if it cannot find something that you need to be able to run the output. Now we're onto the prompts. This is where we get into the topic of subgenerators. Each of these options generate code of some sort. The option name should be indicative enough of what the output will be for each one, but essentially these options are separate generators, also known as subgenerators. Now a yeoman generator can be a one-trick pony, or it can do many typically related things. And I don't want the subgenerator terminology to confuse you here. Subgenerators are just simply regular yeoman generators nested under one main generator to aid in the code generation process in some way. The main generator here is jhipster, which allows you to access some of the subgenerators by providing menu options, which are monolithic application, microservice application, and so forth. We'll see later that there are actually many more subgenerators than what you see listed here. Now when subgenerators are used, the main generator is typically used as a menu, though this isn't always the case, to let you know of the subgenerators available if it makes sense to do so. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a little bit when we take a look at the file system. But for now, let's just go ahead and select the monolithic application option. Now this is where we get into the meat and potatoes of generators. When you work with Yeoman, you will typically be presented with a series of prompts. Some are free text inputs, some are options to be selected, some are passwords, some ask for file pass on where you want the code generated, etc., etc. Now the whole point is to take in some information about your project and or environment to properly generate a solution to get you up and running quickly with your new project. There may be simpler generators out there that just spit out some predefined code without taking in any input, but all of the ones with which I have worked thus far over the years have asked for at least some piece of information which is plugged into the code templates or used to direct the generated output in some way. You can see that the default value is supplied for this prompt, jhipster in this case, which I can accept by just hitting enter. Now I also have the option of supplying my own value, which I'm going to do. So I'll just drop in demo for this prompt and then hit enter. Now for this next prompt, I don't really care what the package name is, so I'll just accept the default of com.mycompany.myapp. And I'll say no to this one. Which type of authentication would you like to use? None. Uh, I'm just kidding, let's do JWT. Okay, and the type of database will be SQL, that's fine. And MySQL is fine. We'll just select MySQL here as well. Do you want to use the Spring Cache abstraction? No. Is that an option? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's roll with no. Okay, and Maven is fine. All right, now this prompt is a multi-select prompt. There are some basic instructions here in parentheses to guide you, but you can arrow up and down over the options and then use the space bar to select the ones you want. Or you can just hit A and select them all. To keep it simple, I'll just select the second option here for WebSockets. 
Okay. Now we're onto the client prompts. So let's just use Angular because why not? Now, would you like to use a boot swatch theme? Yes. Let's see. Um, Cyborg sounds pretty badass. So let's roll with that. And let's use the dark variant because I don't really care. And I'll say yes to international support, which is the default option indicated by the uppercase Y in parentheses. So again, I can just hit enter. And please choose the native language. We'll just roll with English. And good gravy, there are a lot of prompts to this one. Um, no additional language support, so I'll just hit enter without selecting any options. And let's do cucumber because I hate cucumbers and that makes no sense. And I'll just stick to the default option of no for this next one, which again is indicated by the uppercase N in parentheses. Cool, now it's kicking off the code generation process and it looks like there's an error, which I'm not surprised given that I knew my machine wasn't really set up for this generator anyway, but I'll just ignore that for now. Now you can see with all of the create statements here that it dropped a lot of files on my machine, which we'll look at here shortly. And now it's doing an NPM install to bring in all of the dependencies for the client. Now there were certainly a lot of questions we had to answer for this generator, and I will tell you not all of the generators are this complex and ask this many questions, but jhipster really is doing a lot of work on our behalf, so spending a few minutes answering some questions to potentially save hours or even days worth of work is totally worth it. All right, now that the generator has finished, we can see some output here which tells us how to get our application up and running. I'm not actually going to run these commands at this point, but just wanted to mention that a lot of generators will spit out some information like this to tell you how to get going once the generation process is complete. What I do wanna do though is open up Windows Explorer and show you what was generated. Since the code was generated in my current directory, I can just type explorer, if I spell it correctly, dot. And as you can see, there is a lot that was generated here. Remember, this directory was created just before running jhipster, so it was completely empty before the generator did its thing. Like I mentioned before, answering a number of questions is a small price to pay for what generators can do for you, and I hope that's evident with this output here. It looks like a Git repository was set up for me, which was actually shown in PowerShell with my posh Git display. So I can push my projects to a remote repository of my choosing without having to do much initialization work. It also looks like there are a number of different config files here for linters, Angular, NPM, and so on, in addition to a node modules folder for all of the NPM packages, a webpack folder for the webpack config, a folder for Maven, and of course, a folder for the source code. So let's open that one up. And you can see there's a main source folder and a folder for your unit tests. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's check out main. Okay, and it looks like they split up the source directory even further here so as to separate the client from the API. I'm not gonna dig into these individually, but we'll let you peruse those at your leisure. So yeah, there's a lot here. And again, not all generators do this much work, but there are some great ones out there for many different languages, project types, frameworks, etc. And searching through them on the Omen site is a great way to see what generators are currently available. Before we wrap up here, I just want to dig a little deeper into what a generator and its sub-generators actually look like. Now you can find the source for the generators online, more than likely on GitHub, but being that they're just NPM packages we install, I can also find the source right here on my own machine. You'll have to navigate to where your global packages are installed, and for me, they are dropped in C, uh, users, Tony, app data, if I can find it. Where are you at? There you are. Roaming, npm, and node modules. You can see a handful of generator packages here, a couple of which are generators I built for my own personal projects over the years, but the one we're interested in here is the generator jhipster package. The top level directory here contains information about the package, so the generator code is actually in the generators directory. You can see here that there are a ton of scripts and subdirectories. The main jhipster directory is located in the app directory, which is a yeoman convention for all generators. If a generator project has subgenerators, they will be in their own directories with names of the developers choosing, 
but as far as I know, the main generator must always go in a directory called app so that Yeoman knows which one to run by default. Now if we open up the app directory and then look at that prompts.js script here, We can sift through the code and see all of the questions we were asked when we generated our application a bit ago. Now I'm not going to go into the details here, but just wanted to point some things out in case you wanted to see what's going on under the hood, especially if you decide to build your own at some point. I mentioned earlier that subgenerators can be accessed from a menu of some sort that is produced by the main generator. All of these directories, which I'll go back here to the generators directory, now all of these directories contain subgenerators, meaning these are what are actually generating the output we looked at a bit ago. Clearly there are more directories here than menu options, so what gives? Well it's not a requirement by any means that all subgenerators must be accessible to the user through the main generator. Subgenerators are a good way of separating and reusing code generation logic and templates. Typically, the main generator menu options just take you to a subgenerator that makes a good entry point for that type of output, and then behind the scenes, additional subgenerators are called to prompt you for more information and to do the actual code generation work. If you want, you can actually bypass the main generator in Yeoman and run a subgenerator directly. The notation for doing so is to put a colon between the name of the main generator, which is jhipster in this case, and the name of the subgenerator, which is always the name of one of the directories you see here. So if we want to run the Heroku subgenerator, for example, we'd open up a command prompt. and run yo j hipster heroku which will take us directly to the heroku subgenerator now not all subgenerators have their own set of prompts this one does for example but it's possible that you may kick off some code generation immediately upon calling a subgenerator this is more of an advanced way of running generators and should be used with caution now the jhipster team was actually kind enough to supply usage documentation in each of the subgenerator directories, so if you're curious as to how to run the subgenerators, you can refer to the provided documentation. I will say though that not every development team provides this level of information, so again you may want to approach with caution when running subgenerators in this fashion. Now really quickly, for the Heroku subgenerator, the documentation gives you a brief description as to what it does and how to run it. I do want to point out that the Yeoman syntax is omitted here because, as we saw earlier, jhipster has its own CLI, and the example of course shows you how to run the Heroku generator that way. So for jhipster, you're welcome to just use the CLI, which is clearly encouraged by its development team, but if you want to get experience running a subgenerator through Yeoman, you can just run this one like I did earlier with the yo command and a colon between jhipster and Heroku. We covered a lot of material in this tutorial. We first started off looking at what Yeoman actually is and how to install it. We saw how to find other generators that we can download and install for our own projects. We gained a basic understanding of what generators and subgenerators are and how to run each of them directly from the command line through the Yeoman tool. Then we walked through an example of how to generate our own application using the jhipster code generator. After that, we wrapped up by looking at what's under the hood of jhipster to get an idea of what a generator package actually looks like. Now, hopefully you found all of this helpful. You'll find that Yeoman isn't a silver bullet necessarily, but it should get you pretty damn close to what you need whenever you want to create your scaffolding for your next project. If you find that there isn't really a good generator out there that suits your needs or maybe something gets you really close and you're like, you know, I keep having to tweak things after I generate my code, then I really encourage you to check out the guide on the Omen website on how to create your own generator. I may do a follow-up tutorial on that at some point, we'll see. But in the interim, that is a really good guide to follow. And of course, you can always dig up the source code for other generators and just kind of skim through those to see how other developers have created their own. Now from here, I encourage you to take this tool back to your boss and your teammates and impress them and show them how quickly you can get something up and running. Or if you wanna just keep it to yourself and kick back and relax a little bit knowing that what used to take you hours or days can now be done in a matter of minutes. 
Either way, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back here on Dev Mashup in the future. Thanks for watching.